Tucker Carlson announced a new show on Twitter, The Controversial Den for Right-Wing Extremists Who Believe in Free Speech, just like someone named Adolf J. Hitler. George Q. Santos has been charged with 13 felonies and is now in custody. He's finally acting like a real politician. Both straight and gay people are trying to distance themselves from Bud Light, making it the first non-binary beer. Ah, nostalgia. Doesn't it make you feel nostalgic? We're going to talk about some old commercials that remind us of the good old days. And we talk about that Hitler joke. No, not the one Kyle made about Tucker Carlson. The one he made about an unarmed black man who was killed on the subway. Murdered. All this and more on the Babylon Bee Podcast. Hot on the heels of the second largest bank failure in U.S. history, and the eighth interest rate hike within a 12-month period, 186 more banks are at risk of collapsing. Your bank could be next unless the Fed does what they just did back in March and prints $300 billion out of thin air, making your dollar worthless, not to mention the recession risk that could have a significant impact on your investment and retirement accounts. Take our advice and protect your financial future with something real, like gold and silver, from my friends at Allegiance Gold. Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver. And if you prefer, you can have it delivered securely right to your front door. Since the beginning of time, there is only one universal currency that is always of value, and that's gold. Allegiance Gold has the highest ratings in the industry. Five stars with TrustLink, a AAA rating with the Business Consumer Alliance, and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. You can invest with confidence because of the quality and service of Allegiance Gold. Get up to $5,000 in free silver on a qualifying purchase when you visit protectwithb.com today. That's protectwithbee.com. Or give them a call at 844-790-9191. Hey everyone, welcome to the Babylon Bee Podcast. Me and Adam are going to hang out and talk about the news and stuff. Yeah. Jared's texting. And look who's here with us. Oh. He's got off his phone now. Well, I'm just proud that you weren't using voice to text. <laughs> yeah, that's the first I've seen In that the happen. middle of our... Uh, <laughs> just like, Every text I get from Jared is like a long paragraph with a bunch of typos, and I know that he... Yeah. Oh. Hey, Kyle. Um, I just always see him wandering around the office doing this, can, texting Can people. you please get back to me about <laughs> comma... Yeah. Semicolon. Why would you put a how comma does, there? How does the voice to text know when you're saying comma that you want it to be a comma, and if you were saying a comma is a form of punctuation... Like period? Just smart. I guess that's said, fairly smart. I'm on my period. The AI is. I'm on my, is. and it would just have a period at the end. So you're, I'm on my. <laughs> that's how it would be. Yes. So you you'd say like trans women have, and then it would just go like dot just, dot. Yeah. No, just one dot. Well, because you'd say periods. No, you'd say period period, and then it would be period trans women have the, a period too. It would be like trans women have a. Meh. The number two. Number two. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And actually, most likely it would be T O. It wouldn't be T O O. He texted me the other day and he's like, he asked something about his movie that he was in. And he's like, the movie The The Farious. Yeah. Oh. And it took me a long time to figure out what it was. Uh-huh. I, I, you haven't been in that many movies recently. I, well, no. So I should have figured only it one out. That sounds similar to The Farious. But the way it spelled it was like F A R I. And I'm like, oh. The Farious. Like, what is The Farious? Well, he so said, it took me Which while. one? Be sure to check out Jared's movie, The Farious. By the way, by the way, this uh-huh. is kind of like news about yeah. that. It's expanding this weekend. So it usually movies kind of like start off big and then they kind usually of Usually they off. stay the same length, but this one's gotten yeah, longer. Yeah, this one's gotten longer somehow. <laughs> now it's actually, there. it's going into 300 more theaters. Uh, it keeps kind of crescendoing in terms of its um, exposure. People are, more people are seeing it. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Like, I don't know. That's kind of fun. I think it's interesting that some movies do get edited while they're in the theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys remember that Cats disaster that came out a few years ago? Oh, yeah, uh, with a, a Dame like, Judy Dench. They were fixing CGI errors while it was in the theaters. Really? And, like, sending new reels constantly to oh, the I theaters. I didn't know that. Because there was, like, the, it's one of the dances, the CGI feet were, like, clipping through the floor, and so the, the oh, cats wow. didn't have feet and stuff. Yeah. So they really just, they hammered that one out. Did like, Sonic's we get, Teeth, we gotta get this did out. they fix Sonic's Teeth before that movie came out? Yeah, they released a trailer. Everybody it a trailer, hated it. And then they fixed it. And they it. said, oh, yeah, we're going to spend $30 million and fix it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they did. And it was better. And it wasn't just the teeth. It was the whole character design. But the teeth were very noticeable. The teeth were notable. Yeah. But it was like they, the whole character design. The whole character they redesigned the entire character. Like, a, like the video game character. And you can't think more. that's cheap for a CGI movie to like redesign the entire uh-huh. main character. No, the whole character for the entire film? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Now it might be. You could probably go to AI. Hey, replace old songs yeah. with new songs. Yeah, just, just do it. Do it. Yeah. I'm telling you. Uh, well, we got a fun show today. We're going to talk about Donald Trump's civil suit, Tucker Carlson's new show, Bud Light, and George Santos. Bud Light being hated by gays. And speaking of 
Bud Light George Santos getting arrested. Uh, old commercials, hate mail. We got some doozy of some hate mail this week. Uh, hit like, subscribe, and hit the little bell to keep up with all our podcasts on YouTube and Rumble. Find our Babylon B podcast page on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And hey, if you want the full show here, you want to help support the Babylon B, make an independent comedy, become a Babylon B subscriber. Go to babylonb.com slash plans and use the promo code podcast to get 20% off and you're going to get the entire episode. So let's jump in. We got feedback from a subscriber after we talked about our t-shirts and how large was too big, but medium was too small because it shows your guts, but doesn't show your arms. And Clay said, you girls should compare makeup tips considering you are talking about clothes, girl. Very California. And uh, nice his his uh, avatar, his image is, what is that, Martin Luther? Or like, it's not Luther, is that Calvin? Luther. Is that that's Calvin? Ju- that's John that's Calvin. Calvin. John Calvin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a nice comment. He called us girls. and You know, I think Doug, Doug Wilson thinks it was gay for us to mention beards and things, too. That's, that's He had a quote about, like, yeah. guys that... No, it was, it, I think it was, guy, yeah, guys that compliment each other's beards. Yeah. Or guys that are like encouraging each other to work out. Oh, your physique looks nice. You're working out. And he's like, that's very gay. Oh. I think, I think that's I think very... it depends on the language and tone that you use. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have said your physique is looking nice. Hey, your physique yeah. is quite nice. I, you know, but I've heard guys say like, oh, have you been yeah. working out? Yeah. 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 No, I, I agree with you. It, it also depends looks on which... super hot. Like, which which words you use. Like, <laughs> wow, I love your uh, I love your jacket. It's, you look fabulous. It's, it's quite fetching. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's That may be on the... It's on the borderline. Uh, it's a borderline. Your pectorals are quite fabulous. Fabulous. That would you fall are... on the other side of the... Hmm. All right, well, we so have a subscription. More, more of that content for Clay. He'll enjoy that conversation. <laughs> Clay and Doug Wilson, yeah. if he ever listens to our podcast. This is Subscriber Dare. All right, it's time for a Subscriber Dare. This is from Aaron. Uh, Adam, you want to read uh, this? This is from Aaron Brunel. Uh, what's... Uh, it says, if Adam Yenser would come to Nashville, I would become a subscriber for all of eternity. Um, am I coming to Nashville anytime soon? I might be going to Chattanooga this summer. Okay. But yeah, that's close. I'll make it to Nashville at some point, and then uh, you can subscribe when I make it to Nashville. Yeah, I don't think it would be worth it for us to buy you a plane ticket to fly to Nashville. If you want to, I'm not going to say no. say no, but I'm just thinking, like, you fly there, you fly home. Uh-huh. And then she subscribes it's for eighty bucks or whatever yeah. the initial payment is. Yeah, it would take a long time. I'm trying to think. I think there's a Zanies. Subscriber. I think Zanies is the comedy club in Nashville. I'll have oh. to try to uh, yeah. try to get in there. Well, and Aaron, I think the the point of this though is that so you can meet Aaron. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna actually meet. I Aaron? think that was. Aaron? She it doesn't say like, that. It just says go to Nashville. Yeah. And she'll be well, that's true. Like I went to Nashville. Oh, she Aaron. wants to probably go to a comedy show. That's probably yeah. what it is. Oh yeah, I bet that's what it is. Okay. Aaron E R I N. That's a young person spelling. I just want to point out. I had a guy friend, this not a, a young one. not a boyfriend, well, a, well, but I had a guy also friend. It's a woman spelling. It's not. It's a woman. Aaron. It's a woman and a young woman. I had a guy friend who spelled it that way. Did you really? really? Yeah. It's oh, not a a ron. No, it's e e ron. You talk about clothes and physiques a yeah, lot. He, he <laughs> complimented my pectorals quite often. <laughs> hey, sweet pecs. Hey, what's what's in the? Well, I'll try. I'll try to make it to Nashville sometime soon. Nice lats. I don't know about you guys. It takes a lot to shock me these days. But to see our judicial system resemble a third world banana republic, to see trusted American companies embracing insane and destructive woke ideologies, it's all frankly depressing. We must fight back and that starts with changing the way we spend our money. For years, big mobile companies have been dumping millions into leftist causes and we just had to take it because another option didn't exist. But now it does. Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider, offers dependable nationwide coverage on all three major networks. So you get the best possible service in your area without the woke propaganda pushed by leftists working hard to destroy this country. When you switch to Patriot Mobile, you support free speech and religious freedom, the sanctity of life, the Second Amendment, and our military, veterans, and first responder heroes. Their 100% US-based customer service team makes switching easy. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash B2023. That's B2023, B-E-E-2023. Or call them, 878-PATRIOT. Get free activation today with the offer code BEE2023. What's in the news this week? Well, a federal jury finds Donald Trump liable for sexual abuse and defamation in a civil suit brought by author E. Jean Carroll. Uh, So he hasn't been convicted in a criminal sense, but he owes her $5 million. 
Uh, the panel in a Manhattan federal courtroom considered Carl's allegations that Trump raped her in a Bergdorf Goodman lingerie department dressing room in the spring of 1996. So this is how many years ago? Like 20, almost 30 years ago. Seven. And then defamed her in a social media post last October. Uh, the jury said that the author did not prove it was rape, but did. But he did commit sexual battery and defamation. She was awarded $5 million dollars. Uh, his his testimony is just hilarious. <laughs> Can we play? Are we able to play his testimony? It's I really so, want to. So funny. He said, "I'll say it with great. Uh, I'll say it with great respect. Number one, she's not my type. Number two, it never happened. Okay, not my type in any way, shape, or form." And then the lawyer asked him what he meant by "not my type," and then he said he described it as something about well, not just looks, just the energy is you know. And then he goes. You wouldn't be a choice of mine either, to be honest with you. I hope you're not insulted. <laughs> yeah, and I think he was talking about something about hiring people or something. <laughs> yeah. And she said, so you look, you you use looks. And he's like, well, looks and kind of the overall, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't hire you either. I wouldn't, you wouldn't be a choice <laughs> yeah. of mine. I hope you're not offended by that. Yeah, you're not my oh, type. Man. You're not my type. And then my, the other, and my other favorite thing is when they said, uh, the, his comments about you can just move on any woman yep. you want if you're a rock star or whatever. Yes. And he was like, well, you look at the last million years of human history, uh, it's true, fortunately or unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> I think it's yeah. the other way. He unfortunately. Goes, unfortunately, he goes, or fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> it's been true for me, is what he was uh, saying. It's been true for me. But yeah. So, the and and the, the important thing is, uh, so it's not a criminal conviction, and it's also in these types of trials, I think the standard is that you have to prove it's likely that it happened. Mm. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt. Like The burden of criminal. proof is much lower yeah. than in a criminal court. Yeah. And Trump's going to appeal it, of course. Of course. And, uh, and yeah, sometimes was... these damages get lowered by the court later but on. But I feel like this is one of those things now. Every time the left-wing media will mention Trump, they will always say that he was found guilty of sexual abuse. Right. And I don't think his base is going to care a whole lot. Right. They're just going to keep supporting him. That's probably true, too. Yeah. And stuff like this, it's always like... I wouldn't defend Trump on the basis that I couldn't see him doing something like this. <laughs> but... At the same time, it's like something 30 years old and someone brings it up. That's and, just so yeah, hard. It's like, I, I'm, yeah, 30 it's like, years I don't know, it's ago, really you know, wouldn't she have brought you, it up? You don't want to say years. that it definitely didn't happen, but also right. when you bring something like that up, how do you prove it one way or the other 30 years later? Yeah, I mean, at the same time, there are victims who are just scared to come out for years and years, and then when the climate true. changes, they do come out. So yeah. it's not, just being old doesn't mean it didn't happen either. Mm. But she's not his type. Not his type. <laughs> <laughs> That's his defense too. <laughs> I, I think it's so funny. And then there's That's a Bud good. Light update. Five gay bars in Chicago are now boycotting Anheuser-Busch for distancing itself from Dylan Moore. <laughs> so yeah, so what happened is they after yeah, after Budweiser tried to walk back its comments and make some changes because of this, now there's gay bars that are mad for them not yeah. standing by Dylan Mulvaney. It says, we certainly do not feel proud of a beer or company that chooses hate over acceptance and diversity. Since Anheuser-Busch does not support us, we will not support it. And there's all these... Yeah. Bars that are so uh, now they lost their the other five percent of people that don't like Anheuser. They I, they had them for a gay few bars. Do have funny names though: Two yeah. Bears Tavern, Jackhammer, <laughs> Meeting House. That's great. The Sofo <laughs> Tap. I don't even know. I like the Meeting Two Bears house. Tavern and Jackhammer. Those are funny names for gay bars. Do you want to go to the Meeting House? <laughs> Where are we go tonight? Let's go to Jack. Let's Hammer. go to Let's go to Two Bears. <laughs> Go on down to the two down. bears. I think they got room for two more bears at Two Bears Tavern. <laughs> what I want to know is like if I go to a town and I have like I'm on a speaking engagement or something and I go get a beer, how would I tell like not to go into one of these places? Oh, I, I, I was afraid you were going to be like, how do I find how do I the find? Gay? When I'm alone away from my where, family where, and I'm, I'm, just in a, I'm just in a city by myself, how do I find the gay bars? Is there a two bears close to here? Yelp review. Closest to, to, to directions to sometimes uh, you know when I was in when I was in college and then sometimes in LA the the ones that are exclusively gay bars often have the rainbow flag and stuff oh, out. So that's how you tell. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I, I'm just looking at the the jackhammers uh, icon there. It's aggressive. It is wow. It's a, yeah. I mean, I don't think he's operating a jackhammer. He is <laughs> operating a jackhammer. <laughs> There's explosions. Okay, anyway. So, so Tucker Carlson's Tucker Carlson. bringing a new version of his show to Twitter. He made the announcement in a video on Twitter that slammed the mainstream media gatekeepers who manipulate and distort every story every week and don't allow free speech. His video got 20 million views in 18 hours. So it looks like Tucker is just going to post videos to Twitter. Twitter wow. says that they're rolling out monetization options for content creators. And Musk said that he didn't sign any special deal with Tucker. 
He just said, we're rolling out monetization and he's going to take advantage of it like anybody else. It's awesome. So that's really cool. That sounds like a pretty good option for yeah. people that are content creators. It actually seems really exciting that we might have this new video platform with monetization options and less mm -hmm. censorship that stuff can There's get Someone who there. values free speech running yeah. a video platform, that would be awesome. Yeah. Can you imagine having... And, uh, here's how CNN yeah. handled it. <laughs> Right-wing extremist Tucker Carlson <laughs> will relaunch wow. his program on Twitter, a platform he praised as the only remaining large free speech platform in the world after Fox News fired him last month. He's a right-wing extremist. Right-wing extremist. I can't think of another large free speech platform, I guess. You know, if you just took yeah. out right wing extremists, that would be actual it would reporting. Be accurate, oh, it's, it's it accurate. would be actual reporting. But they reporting. have to put, you know, okay. it's not actual reporting. So Jason Howerton said, NBC, will anybody be able to police what Carlson says? Or is this the point? It's just a free for all? Oh, yeah. So this, this guy isn't with a NBC. He's reporting what NBC said, I think. Oh, I see. There we go. Jason on, in, on NBC, this host or whatever. Is that Brian Stelter? That looks or? like Stelter, yeah. Mm -hmm. The he had looked like a tan version of Stelter. Yeah, it's the potato himself. But uh, NBC says, so nobody's going to be able to police him. He's just going to be well, able to say they whatever he wants. about that in the clip, yeah. Like how? He's just going to say whatever he wants. Nobody. Wow. So George, George San J. Santos was arrested and charged in a federal probe. ABC News special report. Uh, New York Representative George Santos is in custody and charged with 13 counts, including wire fraud and money laundering. The Justice Department unsealed 13 federal charges against New York Representative George Santos, including counts of wire fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds, and lying to the U.S. House. Prosecutors claim Santos used campaign funds on personal expenses, including luxury designer clothing who wouldn't, and fraudulently applied for COVID-related unemployment benefits, even though he is a co-sponsor of a bill that would help states recoup fraudulent COVID-19 unemployment insurance I want benefits. you to read the rest like an NPR host. Santos, who is now in federal custody, is expected to appear as soon as Wednesday in court in New York S mm, Eastern District. I like that you read that as New York S. <laughs> New York so, Eastern District, yeah. So what? Yeah. I know he lied with all the campaign stuff and kept claiming he was things that he wasn't. And mm -hmm. yeah. is that kind of how they're getting him? Is because he made false statements and then raised money? Uh, I, I don't know it enough. Seems like I, I <clears throat> honestly don't know enough about about this. George Santos. I just know he lies know? about everything, and I think some of it was related to fraud. All right, let's like talk about something fraud. we know about. Okay, I don't know much about it. The UK has a new king who has been coronated, King Charles. How exciting. The third. Hello. And there they are. There was a lot of good memes from the coronation. Mm -hmm. Look at that. He was kind of holding there. those two like scepter things, which looked cool. They had he had the holy hand grenade of Antioch. Yeah, yeah. He, he did. Which was really neat. The hundred and one Dalmatians jacket. Yep. So, uh, Camilla. The, the kid glaring in the background. That guy's glaring right. He's that's a smolder. That's he's, blue steel. He's training to become one of those guards. He's going to be, That's good. they're going to show this picture when that guy one day rises up and overthrows the king. Yes. So right. Here he was, slighted at the coronation. This was the Antichrist when he was young. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but we were, we were insulting some I, we don't famous know that, royal We don't kid know that kid. Yeah, that <laughs> I'm sorry, kid. Yeah. You're not the Antichrist. All right, it's time for our Banger of the Week. Banger of the Week. Biden deploys 1,500 troops at border to help register new voters. Mm. This border story is pretty crazy. Title 42 is a Trump-era rule to justify quickly expelling immigrants based on stopping the spread of COVID, and that's about to expire. So apparently there's a bunch of immigrants kind of just like waiting. It's like when Disneyland opens or there's a... Show up when the store opens. Yeah, new iPhone release or something. <laughs> Black Friday. <laughs> and... Uh, it's just, it seems crazy down there. I've seen some of the videos from El Paso. There was this car that ran down a group of immigrants. I saw that, yeah. I, I saw it was intentional. Really? I don't know if that ended up being confirmed, but Gosh. it's just insane right mm -hmm. now. So, But at least um, the troops are going to be there to, to welcome them in. Register new voters. Mm. Bomb of the week. AI will be totally great for humanity, says man who has never read a sci-fi novel. I, that one. Yeah, that so I like solid. this. I've read a lot of science fiction, solid. and I agree with this headline. And I like the stock photo we chose of a guy gesturing that he's never read a sci-fi novel. Is, that's, that's, AI, AI is fine. It's fine. 
Sci-fi? Oh, yeah, it's fine. It's Never fine. heard of it. Hey. Yeah. I barely know her. <clears throat> I got the chip in my head. Yeah. I think there's a there's a tweet that kind of goes viral when stuff like this happens. It's like where a guy says, uh, classic sci-fi author, I I wrote this novel as a cautionary tale of what not to do. And then and then it's like scientists 30 years later, we have finally invented the torment nexus from the classic <laughs> novel. Do not create the torment <laughs> nexus. <laughs> Throw that on the screen. It'll be funnier yeah. if people can see it. But, yeah. All right, it's time for our sketch of the week. It's the Babylon Beads sketch of the week. This is, uh, we got a, a, a peek inside a Canadian doctor's office. Look at the Canadian healthcare system. If you guys don't know, they've uh, been pushing aggressively the death by choice type thing in euthanasia. euthanasia over there. Yeah. And uh, in Asia. My favorite, we've talked about on the episode before too, it's really sad, but my favorite story was that of that was like the Paralympic, Paralympics lady. Mm. I'm pantomiming Paralympics lady. Yeah. But that's, that's sign language that's for a, Paralympics. That's sign language for Paralympics. Yeah. She was asking for a new stair lift to help her get up the stairs at her house. And the Canadian healthcare system kept pushing her off for years and years. And finally, they sent her a message back and they were like, we can just offer you euthanasia if you want. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like we can, we can, if, if your life is that uncomfortable, we can offer you assisted death if, options. If wow. you need a chair lift, you should probably kill yourself. It's like Microsoft Clippy. Have you considered killing yourself? Have you ever thought of that? And they said, here's what we can do for you. And they sent her an illustration of that like golden staircase up to heaven, but with a <laughs> with a chair lift on it. <laughs> oh, we'll give you a chair we'll lift. Oh, right. chair lift. oh, yeah. We'll help you up. <laughs> oh, we'll help you. All right. All right, well, let's uh, take a watch. Hello, Jim. Hey. Oh, oop. Sorry about the wait. No, Doc. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 I insist, all right? No, I, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, uh, looks like we got ourselves in a good old fashioned sorry off. Anywho, uh, what brings you in today? Nothing too serious, but I've always had the sore knee, uh, old hockey injury, you know? Oh, yeah, sore knee, hmm. okay, uh, interesting. Oh, we're gonna euthanize you free of charge. For a sore knee? Oh, sure, yeah, it clears the pain right up. And this actually cures your patients? I haven't gotten any complaints. Anywho, oh, would you give me a moment? I actually got to go see a, a poor handicapped woman in room four. Yeah. Hey, sorry about that. W what was that noise? Healthcare. Let's get to work on the details of your treatment plan here. Uh, do you want like a cremation? Or are you looking for more of a traditional burial? <laughs> Ooh, or we can do one of those cool Viking funeral pyres. <laughs> Surprisingly popular. No, no I just, I, w I want some painkillers or something. Nothing kills pain like 800 milligrams of cyanide. <laughs> Believe you me, <laughs> powerful stuff. The Sorry to interrupt, doctor. What did you want to do about the ingrown toenail in room seven? Okay, yeah, I'll just give him two aspirin, make sure he elevates his foot and uh, oh, and then kill him. And what about the lady with the really gross acne? Oh yeah, uh, we're gonna have to kill her too. Leaky bowel syndrome? Oh no, definitely kill him. Okay, thank you. Okay, oh, sorry about that. Uh, well, if you're currently happy with your treatment plan, uh, I can get the nurse to work up uh, some outpatient paperwork and we'll get you on your way, you know, uh, to die. No, this place is crazy. I'm out uh, uh, Hey, hey, whoa, whoa. sir, please. Right, please oh. No. Oh, there's one thing I didn't mention. This treatment's mandatory! I want to live! <laughs> <laughs> oh, be sure to give us a good review online, yeah? And keep us in mind whenever cold and flu season comes around, eh? <laughs> nice fella, yeah? Yeah, nice fella. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. <laughs> well, that's just too bad. <laughs> So anyway, as you can see, I escaped from that crazy Canadian doctor and came across the border. Yeah, they're friggin' commies up there. Anyway, these four ibuprofen will clear that sore knee right up. So easy. I love America. That'll be $570,000. Pocket safe.
Ah, classic. Classic. Some good actors in that one, especially the Sir, American doctor at the end. Yeah, the, he was fantastic with the yeah. cowboy hat. It's great. <laughs> All right, it's time for uh, weekly news with Adam Yenser. Oh, yeah, I got to go write that. Friends, the world is unraveling more by the day. Uncertainty abounds. Hey, picture this. Grocery stores, stripped bare. Warehouses, closed. Restaurants, shut down. Frankly, there may not be enough food to go around when the next disaster strikes. If you don't have enough emergency food on hand, you can just say hello to government handouts. I urge you instead to order your three-month emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply, the nation's largest preparedness company. With each kit you order, you'll receive a bonus bundle of essential survival gear worth over $200 for free. Emergency food and survival gear from My Patriot Supply? Check. The three-month emergency food kit offers your family peace of mind, no matter what happens. Get over 2,000 calories a day of delicious foods that will keep you fed for a long time. Grab your emergency food and free survival gear worth over $200 from My Patriot Supply by going to preparewithb.com. You also get fast and free shipping in unmarked boxes for your privacy. Order now at preparewithb.com. That's preparewithbee.com. It's time for the weekly news with Adam Yetzer. This week in New York, an extra from the 90s movie Home Alone 2 was found liable for sexual assault. A court ordered one Donald Trump to give all the money he just got from Stormy Daniels to author E. Jean Carroll. After a jury found that Trump did indeed, as he put it, move on her like a b The jury also found that Trump defamed her, even though he's the only reason she has fame in the first place. Happy Days star Scott Bayo announced that he is leaving California due to crime and the homelessness crisis. It's shocked America that Scott Bayo himself is not homeless. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg won gold and silver medals at a jiu-jitsu competition in Northern California, so he's now able to restrain both people and their speech. Look how excited he is. A judge in Ohio ruled that Rachel Glines, a man who thinks he's a woman, didn't commit indecent exposure in a female changing room because, quote, body fat covered the genital area. Ah, uh, yes, the FUPA defense. He's now facing the more severe charge, even indecenter exposure. Speaking of fatties, all-you-can-eat buffets like Golden Corral are making a comeback, with sales up 125% since the pandemic ended. Great news if you didn't get COVID but still want all the symptoms. Oh, my chest hurts and my stomach hurts and none of this food tastes right. With the COVID pandemic over, the obesity epidemic is back on. China claims that they taught a monkey to operate a robot using a brain implant. China says the monkey also works well with an ox or a rabbit, but not a snake. A transgender Starbucks barista was fired after getting in a physical fight because a female customer misgendered him. So there's now one transgender person who isn't a Starbucks barista. That's it for weekly news. To see more, subscribe to my YouTube channel and come see me live. I'll be at the Comedy Chateau in North Hollywood on May 12th and at the Looney Bin in Tulsa, Oklahoma, May 31st to June 3rd. And now it's time for Member Berries. All right. So good. Now we're going to look at nostalgic commercials. All of us have nostalgic commercial jingles bouncing around in our heads. We were reminiscing about a few of these last week. Didn't we? Oh, yeah. Was that in the sus subscriber portion, maybe? Maybe yeah. I was talking about yeah, the, Quake, the Twi Quake 2 commercial, I Quake remember, two. and Crocodile Mile. And Crossfire. Crossfire, yeah. yeah. That's right. Oh, Creepy Crawlers I see on there already. I remember that creepy song. Crawlers. Those were the glow-in-the-dark. Creepy dark, like, Crawlers. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. uh, this guy wrote in, Derek wrote in some ideas. Here's a few classic commercials I thought of. Forbidden Bridge. I don't huh. remember that one. There's a board game that was like the little plastic guys on there and then they would fall off if the bridge oh, yeah. shook oh, or something. Oh, okay. That yeah. sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. Creepy Crawlers, Pogs. I don't remember a specific Pog I don't commercial, them but. Advertising them. Yeah. I just remember the toy. Yeah. I remember I went to Knott's Berry Farm and they had like a whole section set up for the 1994 Pog World Championship oh, tournament. Wow. Like a official table lengths and stuff. Yeah, Pogs that were was hot the year was Dennis. No, I'm kidding. I don't remember who won. <laughs> <laughs> Prager. Dennis Karavindian. <laughs> yes. I remember the 2600 Atari commercial, which is actually showing how old mm. I am, but um, it was a great commercial. And I just watched it with my kids the other day. It was a rap. And it was like the 2600 from Atari. Remember this? Do you guys remember this? It sounds vaguely familiar. No, vaguely familiar. Not at all. I, I feel like Adam might have caught it mm. at some point, but it was like, I got a 2600 
that year. So all right, this is a go. toy commercial for Mighty Max. Oh, Max's. I remember this one. This was Mighty the boy Max? version of of right. Polly, Polly Pocket. Pocket. Yeah. Oh, I remember these. Mighty Max. Smasher, get out! Your brain is here. We want brain. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Watch out for that first step. Oh, oh he yeah. died. Was that like a Hitchcock zoom on that Frankenstein yeah. ball? Very. To be continued in a oh. television commercial. <laughs> You'll have to catch the next. I had this red one right here. Oh, yeah? I remember that, yeah. Remember this also mind. reminds me, uh, it popped in my head now, the fast-talking Micro Machines guy. Oh, yeah. Micro That's a Micro Machines. Yeah. Remember, if it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not, not the real thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't remember that. I remember one. that guy. Um, I had a lot of Micro Machines. He was in. I did, too. Micro Machines were huge yeah. when I was a kid. I remember. I used to love Micro Machines. So Sega Genesis was famous for Sega. advertising that they had blast processing. No, it doesn't. So what's blast processing do? Oh, that's that does look blast processed. I still don't understand what blast processing is. <laughs> it was basically a marketing term for some Bastard very bit. very small technical difference in the chip. I figure we can market it by Saying it's blast processing. Sega, 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 Sega. They yeah, don't do. Good. I don't. I don't see Sega commercials. Like, did, did they keep that up? Did they always do? Sega. Is Sega still a company? Yes, but they don't make. Um, I don't know. They don't make consoles oh, anymore. Okay. Yeah, they just make video games or publish oh, video games. So you can okay. play Sonic on a Nintendo. Oh, bubble tape. I see that six six feet of fun for you, not them. I don't. I don't quite remember that one. This yes. is a compilation. We don't have to watch all of them. <laughs> okay. This is looking, yes. Oh, I remember these. Yeah, these were great. It's kind of an MTV thing. Mm -hmm. Nickelodeon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's curlers? <laughs> I remember this. Yeah. Not them. This I like was Saturday morning cartoon stuff. I like the kind of commercial that's like those old people. They don't understand you, kids, yeah. and your gum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then JT, mm. well, one of our fruit subscribers, said he was more oh, of a fruit stripe guy. Here's the See fruit stripe. Is. Oh man. Yep, I remember this one. It makes the nerdy kid cool when he eats the gum. <laughs> Yes, I remember all this. Oh my goodness. This is very nostalgic. I wonder how effective yeah. these are for kids, like little kid brains, like how much that sticks with you. Well, the weird thing is I remember these. I remember, but it's like, did I ever make any purchasing decisions off of it? I don't know. I, no, I, I used to eat bubble tape. Yeah, I had some bubble tape a couple mm -hmm. times, it's probably like, like two yeah. times. I didn't like fruit stripe gum as much. I had it a few times, but that's I didn't, the one that I didn't of, like the fruit flavor of it. It fades away real quick, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and they would say that it lasts, but it really lost its flavor very quickly. It was also kind of like a time, like just the aesthetic of the what for kids mm -hmm. was a weird thing because it was almost like there's micro machines. Peter guy. Gabriel's um, <laughs> sledgehammer. That's right. I had that. I had that set. Dude, they were so much fun. Yeah. Oh, man. They were so cool. From Galoob. From Galoob. I... Micro machines. Is there anything really cooler than toys that like have a little moving part, like a garage door that opens? Oh, when you're a kid. It's, like, yeah, it's, it's just best. like the real thing. Yeah. I had a, a garage. It was like a, a whole thing, like a, a loop. And then there was a garage at the bottom. Oh, the classic Grey Poupon. Oh, yeah. I, see, I, I remember that commercial a little bit, but I remember it more because they parodied it I in remember Wayne's being, World. Yeah, I remember and also being the Food Fighters. The Food Fighters had a video. Mm. Um, I remember more the parodies of that one than the act. Yeah. So, I remember the, it was a, yeah. So uh, one of our subscribers might be dating herself with this reference, but she remembers Pepsodent Pepsi toothpaste. Your teeth look whiter than no, no, no. My teeth aren't new, but my toothpaste is new Pepsodent. Get with it. 
Yeah, I don't remember this. Would have been bef before my time, I think. Pepsi Dent. Oh, that's. I am P. I am P. Ethereum. I feel like this is the type of commercial that then you cut to 20 years in the future and it's like, like doctors have found that irium and IMP causes pancreatic <laughs> cancer. cancer. <laughs> that product had cocaine. It caused your <laughs> teeth to rot out of your head. <laughs> so uh, what else we got here? Folgers, best oh, part yeah. of waking up. That's a classic. That's a great I remember that one. That one was good. There's I don't a... remember Chock Full of Nuts, no. uh, at least in terms of a commercial. Maybe I do if I saw it. Chock Full of Nuts is a heavenly coffee, heavenly coffee, heavenly coffee. Oh, man. Oh, did they go to the same ad agency as Sizzler? Chock, <laughs> chock Full of Nuts and that lady had to sing it. Yeah. She got paid well. Now, some of them are... Oh, remember um, the... I think there's a documentary about her now, but the Call Me Now, Miss Cleo, they would always advertise oh, yeah. those psychic hotline shows. Oh, yeah. Total fraud or something. Yeah. Right? yeah. Was she a total fraud? You know, a lot of the ones I remember are local commercials, and I'm not sure how widespread yeah. they went beyond the LA area. Mm -hmm. But there was like Larry H. Parker. He he was always on there. I'll fight for you. Yeah, that was a good one. That was uh, the local... You know, when you're homeschooled from sick, those were all the commercials you would see. The one I remember from yeah. Pennsylvania, the local commercial, there was a company called Jack Lair Electric, and they were like the local electricians, and there's a commercial, mm -hmm. and then it was this sort of well-produced commercial of what they do and the sort of technical side of their products, and then it would end with like, they clearly shot just on a handheld camera their employees standing outside the building, and it's this real high-energy commercial because they go, that's Jack Lair Electric. <laughs> just standing there and it's so low energy and weird <laughs> that was awesome that's like cut away i know yeah. those uh those local commercials the low budget local commercials that's some uh, of my favorite stuff oh they're so good yeah it's always it's always an auto like auto repair shop or like a mm. i don't know like a car salesman there was always like a local car salesman in colorado that had one he always wore like a big hat it's like kind of like some kind of gimmick every time there was like a zebra with him or something so funny there's Mario with some cereal. Oh, Tootsie oh, yeah. Pops. Do they have that one with the uh, the owl? That oh, yeah. How many one, looks would it take? Two, a three. 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 <laughs> the, the one with David the Gnome, Ghost Rider, Square One. I don't know what some uh -huh. of these are. Oh, where's the beef? Oh, where's that the was beef? a classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the beef? Where? That's another one I know more from the parody yes, than from yeah. the original. But. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you have any other nostalgic commercials you guys can think of, send them our way. Maybe we'll talk about them in a future segment. Now it's time for hate mail. Hey guys, Kyle here. We want you not to be limited by restrictive networks when it comes to choosing the healthcare providers and treatments that are right for you. There is another way. Samaritan Ministries connects hundreds of thousands of Christians across the nation who help pay one another's medical bills, all without the use of insurance. Consider this, a medical emergency arises. You don't have to check and see what hospital is in your network or be concerned about the emergency room doctor being in network too. Oh no. You go to the hospital you choose and don't give a second thought as to what's in network and what's not. Because with Samaritan Ministries, you're in control of your health care. After receiving care, you send your medical bills to Samaritan Ministries and they notify fellow members to pray for you and send money directly to you to help you pay those bills. And when another member has a medical need, you'll do the same for them. That's what biblical health care sharing looks like. Check it out today at SamaritanMinistries.org slash the Babylon Bee. That's SamaritanMinistries.org slash the Babylon Bee. You used to be good. Adam Ford. Adam Ford. Adam Ford. Adam Ford. Adam Ford. I really miss Adam Ford. Mm. We had an article, Hitler exonerated after footage discovered of him moonwalking on the subway. <laughs> and <laughs> that we have picture. Hitler here, he's a... Uh, he's moonwalking. Moonwalking. He actually looks more like he's in, uh, he's in the producers. Remember that show? Oh, yeah, they're spring, springtime for Hitler. Springtime spring for, for Hitler, Hitler and Germany. Yeah, that one. Mm. Uh, so this article got some hate, and I understand it. This one was one we were kind of on the fence about publishing or not. I was against this one. Was I was it. like, yeah. I was like, I think I pitched it, and then I was like, it's going to go too far. Some people are going to get upset. It could get misunderstood. And so we pitched some alternatives that were softer, and I'm like, you know what? 
either go for it and do it or just don't like let's just not touch it um and we decided to publish it so so what's the what's the <coughs> for those who don't know so this is referen- what's the pre- what's the reference this is referencing the death of jordan neely so jordan uh-huh. neely was killed on the subway this week as he um apparently had been erratically either assaulting or threatening to assault people on the subway and a marine i believe tri- uh-huh. Held him in a headlock. Held him he, in like a choke in, hole. He had him in a rear naked choke. I saw this video. Yes. The technical term is either that or the lion choke. And I don't know all the details. It sounds like it sounds like some people were saying you should stop. Other people were like, other people on the train are coming out and saying, no, he was still, you know. He was fighting the whole time. He was I fighting. We had, he had yeah. to try to subdue him. Or some people said it was too much. You know, like you could have just restrained his hands or something. You didn't need to. Yeah, people, that, those people have obviously never been in a life-threatening situation. But what this article was trying to parody was that immediately people like AOC and a lot of the people on the left started um, started posting old videos of Jordan Neely where he would perform on the subway as MJ, as Michael... Uh, Michael not, Jackson not Jordan, impersonator, the other yeah. one. Michael Jackson and uh, doing mo- moonwalking and stuff on the subway. And it was kind of like, this guy was... It was one of those things where you pull up like a childhood photo and say like, see, they, why were they killed? They, you know, they, they weren't doing anything bad. Um, so that's what that's supposed to be. Making okay, of. I got you. Yeah, because I saw that story and we had a conversation because I, I do jiu-jitsu. So we were all talking about it uh, at jiu-jitsu class because that's a jiu-jitsu move. The guy had his legs in, mm-hmm. uh, like he had his hooks in around the guy and he had him wrapped up. So it was like a, a classic sort of, you yeah. know. And so we were all kind of talking about it because you kind of play around with it at jujitsu and you're like, you know, this stuff is actually really dangerous. You have to be very careful. But the guy, I mean, I don't know if he was high. I don't know what was going See, on. See, that's in that's one of the reasons I was against this time. is because I, I think yeah. in these cases where there's an unarmed person who who's killed, whether it's by the police or in this case by bystanders who stepped in. I always think there's, I see, I don't know all the facts mm-hmm. and I don't think we knew all the facts at the time. And I always think there's a chance what what came out was that he was yelling and some of the people on the subway train were moving away from him, that they were intimidated or scared by what he was saying, that he threw his jacket down. But it was unclear, and I still don't know whether he actually physically attacked someone first or verbally said he was going to physically attack someone, or if this guy restrained him because he was just acting sort of erratic. And I think all of that matters. And then I also just don't think... I, I, like, it's it's a weird structure for a joke, and it's a big swing to reference Hitler in a joke that's an obscure reference to a controversial story. <laughs> it's just, That's uh, true. All the pieces are there for... Uh, yeah, I can see why there's a problem here. It's a, Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's, you yeah, want to be circumspect yeah. about some of these things. And I think it's always possible, like maybe information will come out that he was sure. physically tagging someone first or it was justified. Yeah, I agree. But, it could be know, jumping the gun. It's, you know, but we got some real angry hate. Mail. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one from James. It's physically impossible for conservatives to make jokes. It can't be done. <laughs> Check out my special on dry bar instead. <laughs> Adam's pretty good at it, actually. So is Scott. King Josiah said, imagine if the Babylon Bee actually believed in God. I don't hmm. understand that one. I don't get it. I don't know what King Josiah Shane Sims were. You people at the Babylon Bee are probably big fans of Hitler's work, huh? Yeah, why a... would we make that joke if we were fans of yeah. Hitler? Yeah, solid burn. Solid burn. <laughs> well, his artwork. Okay. <laughs> E-Raid said, man, I love it when Christians compare a homeless man yelling at people to Hitler. It reminds me of all those times Jesus definitely didn't yell at people. I get the yeah. first part of the criticism. Yeah. I don't get the second. It reminds I, me. Yeah, it's interesting. He doesn't stick with his satire. He should it have said. It reminds me of all those times Jesus definitely didn't. Well, oh, because because Jesus was... So Jesus he's saying Jesus was yell. like Jordan Neely because he was a Cause he yell, cause homeless he, man yelling at people. Because he used to yell at people. <laughs> yeah, uh, see how they're the same? Here's Okay, so here was the most bizarre one. This guy said, arguing online isn't enough. We need to start killing these people. I cannot express this enough. Right-wingers are way too comfortable expressing their views. That should very much change. Mm. So a little death that's threat. A, that's a threat, that seems, of, threat of violence. Yeah. That does seem very, yeah, ominous. I hope he doesn't know our address. Yeah, you should do it. No. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> All right, on that exciting <laughs> note, thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, babylonb.com slash plans. 20% off if you use the code podcast to join, and you get to hang out with us the rest of the time. Podcast. Uh, we got some subscriber headlines this week. We have uh, someone who wrote in in the mailbag and asked us a deep theological question about God. So that's going to be fun. Coming up next, for Babylon B subscribers... 
why did God ask Abraham to sacrifice Isaac? Yeah. It, it kind of feels like one of those edgy atheist arguments like, yeah, child sacrifice is bad, but God killed Jesus. Hmm? New Ultra Odor Buster Snazzle Max with Bleach Alternative. I like that old clip of him when he was debating SoRap. How dare you? How dare you? Like how we need to make America great again. This has been another edition of the Babylon Bee Podcast. From the dedicated team of certified fake news journalists you can trust here at the Babylon Bee, reminding you to vote straight ticket Republican, just like the apostles did.